When the 2018 iPad Pro was released, the most disappointing thing about it was the software. But yesterday, Apple announced iPad OS, a new operating system that allows iPads to be more like computers. It's coming this September, and it supports every iPad since the iPad Air 2. First of all, there's a new home screen that holds six columns of apps instead of five currently on iOS 12. And they can all slide over to the side to make room for the new Today View with customizable widgets all on one page. iOS 13's dark mode is also coming to iPad OS. It turns on easily from the control center and it works system wide. Apple is also making it super easy for third party apps to support it with their new Switch UI framework. Face ID on the iPad Pro will unlock up to 30% faster, and apps will be smaller in size, so they'll download faster and launch up to two times faster than before. The Photos app gets a new Photos tab, which organizes your photos in new day, month, and year views. We also finally have some awesome photo editing tools, allowing you to adjust things like brightness, contrast, saturation, and white balance. You get those same tools for video editing as well, alongside auto enhance, crop, and rotate. Yes, you can finally rotate videos. With iPadOS, Safari automatically chooses the desktop version of websites, and it automatically optimizes it for touch. There's also a brand new download manager that saves downloads right into the new downloads folder within the Files app making it much more like an actual computer. And speaking of the Files app, it's now actually decent and more computer-like than ever before by finally allowing you to connect an external hard drive, SD card, or USB flash drive and transfer files. The biggest deal is the new On My iPad location, which allows you to create folders and transfer files directly to those folders without having to first import them to camera roll or put them on the iCloud drive. So it's basically like a macOS file manager. You can even zip and unzip files and folders. Another big step up is that you can now connect a digital camera and import files directly into apps like Lightroom without having to copy them to camera roll first like we had to do before. For cloud storage, you can now share files in entire folders with other people. And we even get support for shared servers. So if you have a cloud accessible NAS, you can access those files right on your iPad. And finally, there's a new column view that makes it easy to navigate through folders in a preview pane that gives you detailed metadata with quick actions like markup, rotate, and create PDF. Apple has also taken the iPad a step further by adding the same keyboard shortcuts we get on Mac OS right onto the iPad using the smart keyboard or any compatible Bluetooth keyboard. You can now also download custom fonts right from the App Store and manage them on your iPad. The most annoying thing while browsing the web is having to create new accounts and passwords. Well, now Apple is adding a new sign in with Apple feature that automatically and instantly creates accounts using your existing Apple ID with a simple Face ID or Touch ID confirmation. And there's even an option to create a unique fake email address that forwards to your real email, so it adds tons of security as well. The iPad can also be used to encrypt your HomeKit security camera's footage so you know that no one else is able to hack in and view your camera's feed. Apple has also completely redesigned the text editing with brand new gestures that are so much easier to understand and use. To move the cursor while editing, just touch and drag it to your desired location. To select a block of text, just drag your finger over it. You can also select text using multiple taps. Two taps for a word, three for a sentence, and four taps for an entire paragraph. Once selected, pinch with three fingers to copy, then spread with three fingers to paste. And there's no more need to shake your iPad to undo. Now simply swipe with three fingers instead. Apple has also added new on-screen keyboard features, like the new Quick Path or Swipe keyboard, and the ability to pinch and shrink the keyboard to detach it and move it wherever you want for one-handed typing. Now onto multitasking, Apple has added some additional options to easily switch between the app that's open in slide over mode. Simply swipe up on the bar on the bottom of the app and every previous app you've had open pops up. You can even slide along the bar to swipe between slide over apps, just like you can do on the home bar for full screen apps. Another huge update that makes the iPad more like a Mac is the ability to open multiple windows of the same app. So that means two notes apps, two mail apps, or even two third party apps like Microsoft Word side by side. 
This also means that you can have multiple split screen spaces open with multiple instances of the same apps running at the same time. And to view those spaces, just tap on an app on the dock and it'll show you all the spaces that include that app. Apple has also made it easier to work with the Apple Pencil, with a new easy way to mark up a photo or page. Just drag your Apple Pencil from the corner of the screen to mark up. And there's also an awesome new full page option, which actually includes the whole full length page you're viewing not just the section that was visible when you started the markup. Within markup, there's a new pencil tool palette with updated icons. You can easily shrink or drag and move the palette anywhere you'd like so it doesn't get in your way. Now here's an outstanding new feature called Sidecar. You can now use your iPad as a secondary Mac display, allowing you to view an app on the iPad while working on your Mac, or exactly the opposite. You can actually use your iPad to draw, design, edit, or create content using full desktop Mac apps while viewing the finished result on your Mac. And it even works wirelessly. Alongside all those awesome changes to the iPad, Apple has a massive list of changes that are coming with iPadOS, and I'll share that link in the video description below. But here are some of the coolest changes. The iPad now supports the PS4 and Xbox One S gaming controller. The 2018 iPad Pro now supports Dolby Atmos playback. You can now select Wi-Fi networks and Bluetooth accessories straight from the control center. You can now add attachments to events and calendar. Maps is completely redesigned to include more detail. Siri has a brand new voice. You can now control your entire iPad using a new voice control feature. And there's just so much more than that. So if this video helped you out, make sure to tap that like button and click that button above to subscribe. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video. And the pro stand, $9.99. And like the Mac Pro, they'll all be available in the, in the fall.